In today's lesson, we will be learning about the different sections of the brain and their functions. The brain is one of the major organs that is a part of our central nervous system. There are two sections of the nervous system. There is the central nervous system, which is the brain and spinal cord, and there's also the peripheral nervous system, which is the nerves. But today, we will only be focusing on the brain. The brain is responsible for us seeing, hearing, smelling, and tasting. The brain uses the, phys the electrical and chemical responses that it receives from the different functions of the body and the different senses to make sense of the world that is around us. For instance, the brain is responsible for us to hear music, for us to see movies, and for us to taste chocolate. The brain also controls the different physical movements, thought processes, and bodily functions. For instance, the brain helps us stand up, run around, and even jump. The brain also controls how we think. It is responsible for us to do a math problem, for us to read, and it also helps us make decisions. The brain also helps us control bodily function. The brain is heavily involved in even the digestive system because it controls how each digestive system organ works. It regulates each bodily function in each organ system. There are three sections of the brain. There is the cerebrum, the cerebellum, and the brainstem. The cerebellum is the first section of the brain that we will be discussing. The cerebellum is located at the very bottom of the brain and is responsible for keeping our balance and for helping control the muscles that we use for daily physical tasks. The cerebellum helps us run around, it helps us stand up, and it even helps us play football. The cerebellum also helps us control our balance. It's the part of the brain that helps us keep us upright and it even helps us jump around and help tightrope walkers walk across the tightrope. Examples of tasks that the cerebellum helps us achieve would, as I said, running a race, standing upright, and walking on a tightrope. The next section of the brain that we will be discussing is the cerebrum. The cerebrum is the second portion of the brain. The cerebrum is also the largest part of the brain and it is responsible for how we think, how we make decisions, and how we process information. The cerebrum is divided into two parts, the left hemisphere and the right hemisphere, and each half of the cerebrum is responsible for different processes. The left hemisphere controls the right side of the body. It is also responsible for making decisions, for using logical processes, and understanding languages. The left hemisphere understands more logical processes. When you are solving a math problem, the left hemisphere is the side of the brain that you are using. When you are also speaking or trying to write, the left hemisphere is the one that turns your thoughts into actions or into thoughts that you can understand and put on paper. The right hemisphere, however, controls the left side of the body. If you are left-handed or you try to do a task like balancing on your left foot, you would be using your right hemisphere. The right hemisphere is responsible for us feeling more creative and imaginative, and it helps us recognize faces, music, and 3D shapes. Many times, more artistic people or people who like to draw or paint uses the right hemisphere to draw or to paint. The right hemisphere helps us understand music. It helps us understand the difference between classical music, rap music, or pop music. It uses the different frequencies from each type of music and helps us understand which type of music it is. The right hemisphere also helps us understand the different faces. If you were to look for your friend in a crowded room, you would be using the right hemisphere of the cerebrum to choose apart your friend from the large crowd. The final section of the brain is called the brain stem. The brain stem is the third section of the brain. The brain stem connects the larger portion of the brain to the spinal cord. The brain stem has a few functions. 
The brainstem helps us control small muscle or motor movements, and it interprets sig signals received from the spinal cord into information. The brainstem helps us control small motor movements. Small motor movements include chewing your food, rolling your eyes, or even smiling. The difference between the brainstem and the cerebrum is that the cerebrum uses more muscles to do heavier physical tasks. The cerebrum helps us run races, do gymnastics routine, and even play baseball. The brainstem is different because the brainstem uses smaller muscles, such as the muscles found in your eyes and the muscles found in your jaw. The brainstem also interprets signals received from the spinal cord. Signals that the brainstem receives are electrical signals, such as heat or pain, and chemical signals, such as taste and smell. The brainstem uses these signals received from the spinal cord and turns them into the different sights and sounds and senses that we understand. For instance, if we were to smell a pot of brownies or a pan of brownies that our mom just made, the brainstem is the one that interprets the smells into delicious chocolate. That is, those are the main functions of the brainstem. There are a few common misconceptions when it comes to our brain. Uh, one of the misconceptions that I hear quite frequently is that their left brain people are more organized and right brain people are more creative. As we just learned, the left hemisphere is responsible for more logical thought processes, such as solving a math problem, being more logical as you control your emotions more, and it's responsible for more reasoning processes. The right side of the brain is more creative. It allows you to draw, it allows you to understand music, but there are no, there are no such things as left brain people and right brain people. Granted, you may be more creative or you may be more logical, but all people use the left side of the brain and the right side of the brain equally, even when solving complicated math problems or creating a large art piece. There's also a common misconception that we only use exactly 10% of our brain. While we do only use a small portion of our brain, we do not only use exactly 10%. Most physical tasks, such as even running a race or jumping jump rope, uses more than 10% of our brain. Although it has been shown that we use a very small portion of our brain, it has never been a scientifically used that we use only exactly 10% of our brain. Here are a few websites that you can use to help you understand more about the brain. The, work, the first website contains a list of videos that you can watch that gives you more information about the section of each brain, how your brain changes over time, and addresses any misconceptions that I have addressed and ones that you can look more into in the future. The second website allows you to have an interactive model of the different sections of the brain. In this lesson, I have only taught you three sections. On the website, it lists the cerebrum, the cerebellum, and the brainstem, and a few more detailed portions of the brain. You can use this activity to help you understand more about the brain and their functions.